Here's some help with the Experiment 3 pre-lab. The first question says list the three factors that influence the absorption of electromagnetic waves by a compound in solution. How is each to be controlled during the course of your experiment? So the idea here is we're trying to figure out how much of a compound we have in solution. So we're going to shine light through it, and the more compound we have, the less light we'll be able to get through. There are three factors that will influence exactly how much light gets through. One is the solvent. If you, with diff different solvents absorb a different amount of light, and so that will make your baseline absorption different. So we're going to control that in this experiment by keeping the solvent the same for every measurement. Another difference is, is depends on how concentrated the solute is, the compound that we're trying to measure. If there's only a little bit, it won't absorb as much light as if you have a lot. So we're going to be taking careful account of exactly what concentration the compound is in. That's how we're going to control that factor. And the third factor is the path length of light. You can imagine if you had the light going through just a very, very thin glass container, not as much light would be absorbed as if it went through a really, really long, big glass container full of the solution. So we're going to be using the same container. Here the container is going to be called a cuvette, C-U-V-E-T-T-E, -E -T -T -E, uh, for each experiment, and so that will standardize that. That's how we're going to control the path length during the course of this experiment. Question two says, what would happen to the absorption in each of the following cases? First case is the outside of the cuvette was not washed properly from a previous experiment. Now, we're trying to make sure that all of the absorption comes from the compound, the solute, we have dissolved inside of the cuvette. If you handle the cuvette, your fingerprints, the oils on your hands, uh, form a thin layer of oil on the outside of the cuvette. And that oil will absorb some of the light. And so that will add to the absorption of the compound, and you'll get a higher absorption and a lower transmittance of light than you otherwise would have. Uh, B, scenario B says, the inside of the cuvette was not washed properly from a previous experiment and green dye was left inside. So here the green dye is going to absorb some of the light in addition to what the solute that you're measuring is absorbing. And so together, those absorptions uh, will be higher than if you just had the solute. Case C says a colored test tube or cuvette was used. Now if you use a colored test tube, the test tube itself, or the cuvette itself, is going to absorb some of the light. And so that absorption would be added to whatever absorption the solute of, or the compound you're measuring would have. And so again, the absorption would be bigger. Question three says, is absorption an intensive or extensive property? And explain. So an intensive property is a property that's the same no matter how much of a material you have. For example, the density of iron is always the same. It doesn't matter if you have a tiny bit of iron or if you have a gigantic building of iron. The density of iron is always the same. An extensive property is a property that does depend on how much of a material you have. So for example, the length of a property, or the length of a piece of iron, that depends on how much you have. If you have a tiny piece, the length will be small, and if you have a big, uh, big piece, the length will be big. So that's an extensive property. So we said that absorption depended on path length, on how big the cuvette was. So see if you can take that information and decide whether absorption is an intensive or extensive property. Question four says, using the graph provided, find the concentration of a solution that had an absorption of one. Now, the absorption in this graph is on the y-axis, and, so, and the concentration is on the x-axis. So you would want to go, here they're giving you an absorption of one, so you're going to go on the y-axis up to one, then you go over, see where it hits the line. At that point, go down, and you can see that here, an absorption of 1 would give you a concentration of 0 0.5. Question 5 says, you have a solution that is 4.931 times 10 to the negative third molar, 
Then you perform a serial dilution by removing 30% of the original volume and replacing it with fresh solvent. If you did this three times, what would be the concentrations of the three diluted solutions? So each time, the new solution is only going to be 70% as concentrated as the original solution. So you'll take the concentration they give you at the top, here 4.931 times 10 to the negative third, and multiply it by 0.7, right, that's 70%, 0 0.7, and that would be the concentration after the first dilution. That would be like this second cuvette here. If you do the dilution again, take 30% out and fill the rest up with water, it's going to be 70% of that second dilution. So you take that, multiply it by 0.7 again. And likewise, if you diluted it again, take that concentration and multiply it by 0.7.